TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. I know you can only hear me in your left ear. I know. There's nothing I can do about it. My mic is messed up until I get back to Chicago. Inside Prison, Britain Behind Bars, Season 1, Episode 1. Let's get into it. This is what y'all been wanting. Your wish is my command. I honestly forgot that I was supposed to do it. Now I remembered. Somebody just reminded me. You're not about to copyright me. I'm not fun to go. Let me out. They were bummed on that mug. I'm locked up. They won't let me. I feel it. They won't let me out. <laughs> Mr. Rosa, I'm giving you a 92,000 inmates. Alright, I'll just go behind the door, please. I've been spoken to in a threatening manner before, but no, nothing quite that threatening. I've seen crack houses better in condition than this. Did you expect Earl Stick to be like the Ritz? There's more drugs in prison than there is on the out. Yeah, that's what I said. That's All the time. I gotta sit and watch the intro. Britain's prison estate stretches from Inverness to Dartmoor. Over six months, we followed the extremes of life inside. From women's prisons, Young Offender Institutes. Leon, stop asking around, mate. We're moving cells. To high security jails. Have you been doing drugs? It's a system. Yeah, absolutely, ma'am. Yeah, he was just about to say yeah or something. And that costs the UK taxpayer over £4.8 billion every year. In Ew. addition, millions more horse through our jails every day. Directly. In Wait, so y'all prison system isn't privatized? Wow. I thought, like, some of them are now, right? To the hands of prisoners. Good life. Ah! He has told us while he's been in custody, he's made just over £280,000 by selling mobile phones and drugs. And he's only been in eight months. Wow. Some of us got to work a decade to earn that much. He sound like he want to get in cahoots with him a little bit. You're going to be general. Go on, smash all up. <laughs> For the 300 female prisoners at Downview, money is crucial to survive. They get it from prison jobs, from friends and family. Come on, ladies. And from some rather unorthodox sources. Hello, Peter. How are you? Did you put that money in the bank account? Oh, why not? For 31-year-old repeat offender Gemma James, making money has always been the name of the game. Now I'm an expert at shoplifting. Everyone is trying to hustle. I, I learned from young to manipulate everyone quite quickly. Gemma Sorry, is yeah. serving five years inside for burglary, but she's found a way of making money from men on the outside. We put a little photo and a little message in a magazine, Lonely Hearts column. Most people put naked photos in there, but I won't do that. I don't put my photo in there, I put other people's, because I don't, don't want no one to know, and I'm never going to meet these people. Yeah. But some of them write filthy letters. Yeah. You put your photo, you wouldn't have one letter. And I, I'm not I'm not here to make fun of nobody. I'm not here to do none of that. I'm just saying on, on, on my taste bud, on my level of taste. Got a fan mail from my sugar daddies. All right then. Sugar Thanks. plums. Uh, so he's wrote the same letter twice. 
pussy. Has he got dementia? Pussy, pussy, so loves nice. juicy pussy. Loves pussy, pussy, love juicy pussy. <laughs> I love both your pussies. I never met them. Hey, I love you, man. <laughs> I never uh, met them. Whoever wrote that is my spirit animal. I felt it. With drugs rife in prisons like Downview, it's easy for inmates to get into debt. Gemma is desperate for more money from one of her sugar daddies to pay off spice dealers on the wing. Hello? How's it hanging? Did you get my letter? You know you haven't sent me money for about two weeks. Three weeks. Uh, I've had to double bubble off people, yeah? And they're saying if it's not here, like, within the next few days, I'm going to get beaten up. They sent me money. I've just had a falling out with them because the prison decided to swap the letters over in the envelopes. Two, two men that I write to, they've swapped the letters over, so they've got each other's letter, so they're going mad at me and they're not sending me money right now. Shall I give you a... Dang. The prison system threw salt in your game, and it was probably on purpose. So I'll bring you back in a minute. It's probably old girl you was just telling all your business to. The details, the details. My friends to put it in her account. Not a bank account. You just put it in an envelope and post it. But I'm in trouble. Oh, whatever. Bye. Send my photos back. I just sent you loads of photos. I want them back. At first, I had about 14 of them, and, I, and, and then I got out. I never go and meet them. I never go and see them, and so slowly I've lost them all. It's, it's naughty what I do, but I think if I was really a young girl, 16, 17, they'd be trying to manipulate me. Across many prisons in Britain, Friday is canteen day, a chance for prisoners to buy treats with the money. they earn inside and money they get from friends and family outside <laughs> as tobacco was banned in prisons in 2018 many inmates now buy vapes which are very tradable oh wow that's, that's a lot of money they got vapes in prison now that's tough i didn't even know inside that. prison 10 times what you pay outside i think i'd heard recently that a lighter a plastic disposable lighter that you probably get three for a pound for in the pound shop in prison is 50 or 60 quid. My law was looking after me today because that I could see an opportunity downstairs where the door was unlocked. I went in and I robbed eight packets of apes. And I'm that worried. I put two pairs of knickers on so that if they strip search me, and I put the towel around me, I've still got knickers on. And then in these knickers, I'm going to show you a secret as well so when i get strip searched and i've got two pairs of knickers on they won't know have a towel around me and i'll drop my jaws but i've got another pair on they're, they're, they're never gonna know <laughs> so that's what that little pouch for is in there it's for inmates got it my bad With violence sure. and drugs endemic in britain's jails the authorities have drafted in 2,500 rookie officers across the country. Finish can't make your life now, aren't you? You need to step up and you need to take charge of these prisoners. In HMP Bullingdon, Oxfordshire, an alarming 75% of officers are in their first two years of service. Everybody's ignoring me. That's not very assuring. It's only about 15 officers. All right, all right. No need to shout at me. This is my first day live, mate, so give me some slack. Okay. Today, former office worker John Aldridge is starting his first shift. He will have to control 65 inmates and one of the three spurs on Sea Wing. What are you doing up here, buddy? What are you doing up here? This sprawling prison is home to over 1,100 prisoners ranging from shoplifters to murderers. Oh, on the one turn, let's go, let's move on to spur three, please. 26 years Shoplifters and murderers in the same prison. Wow. In the same tier of prison. Your old John has just completed a 10-week college training course. I decided to become a prison officer. Um, I was trawling through job adverts, and I clicked on it and had a read of the job description, and I thought, actually, that sounds really quite interesting. 
It actually does not at all. Violence against staff in Britain's prisons has risen dramatically as gangs of prisoners battle for control of the wings. It's up by nearly a third in the past 12 months. Bullingdon saw over 130 assaults on officers last year alone. A little bit nerve-wracking. Um, college seems quite a long way removed from here. Looking forward to actually, I guess, taking the training wheels off. <laughs> you basically like passing your test and taking the L plates off. My boy looked like he worked at your local gaming store, GameStop, or behind the counter or something. This is bound for trouble. I'm putting little green peas on. It's 7.45 in the morning. Unlock at Bullingdon. John's first task is to check on the prisoners. Step back a bit, mate, for us, mate. Oh, I just want to come in and have a chat. I don't want to chat. I don't want to talk through a door, that's all. I don't want to talk about Nothing to talk about. Right. I'm not coming out for 10 minutes and you bang me back up. I'm not going to let you out now to go back behind your door. Because you're so new, you don't really know what you're doing yet. You giving me a bit of jip isn't going to help me learn, though, is it? Do you want to fucking fall out of me? No, I don't. Why are you standing there causing me shit? I'm not trying to cause you shit. I just want... All you're doing is aggravating the situation. All right. Because I'm looking at you. All right, I'll go away. Simple as that, man. Keep it by the books. My man don't want to talk. These are not your friends. <laughs> They do not view you as a friend. They don't like it. That's it. You just That's leave it. behind their doors. I thought I was going to be all right today. Yeah. I don't feel all right now. In need of serious advice on managing the prisoners, John seeks help from one of the most respected men on the wing, 35-year-old prisoner, top dog, Anthony Gooch. Mills was really quite upset with me this morning. Is he part of the Gooch gang? Yeah, the thing is, though, you can say something to someone, they can take it the wrong way. There's no fault of your own, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The thing is, just finding that boundary in between yeah. of doing your job and giving a bit of leeway with certain people. He's come onto the wing and he's a typical new officer. He's uh, doing everything by the book as he was trained. Um, and if you do that, it sort of goes against the grain with certain inmates. You had the attitude of coming in and going by the book and sort of gain a lot of enemies very, very quickly. And as we've seen in the past, Inmates have uh, ways to deal with officers like this. Normally ends up with uh, a big bucket of uh, urine or excrement thrown over their head or, or they're assaulted. Um, so it is key that they come in and they, they get to know the people and they learn how the wing is run. It's made threats to go up the bars, made threats to harm staff, made threats to disrupt the regime. <laughs> One officer who knows better than most how to gain the respect of the prisoners is supervising officer Mark Walker. I'm the type of guy that will have a laugh and a joke with them. I'll take the mickey out of them, but they know that when I am serious and I need things to be done, the majority of the time, it gets done. It's a lesson that John needs to learn. Okay, so you're looking for like that fine line, that sweet spot. Okay. Learn and fast. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, what, dickhead? What are you going to do? Do not call me a dickhead. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? You're a dickhead. I am not. You're a dickhead. 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 He's supposed to be handing out Xbox 360 disc from behind a counter or ringing your groceries up. This is not for you, sir. That's what's just happened there. Multiple times. Right? Try and distance yourself. When it's like Yeah, that, I did my... Just try... I know the adrenaline kicks My brain, in. I was like... I was, yeah. If I'm being honest, I was starting to get a little bit scared there because yeah. he's bigger than me. This is why this is our safe area. Just put distance between yourself. He's not backing off, he's not walking away. No. It's for your safety. He was just frustrated and not getting the right answer. Mm -hmm. You've just started, yeah. it's still a learning process. Oh, oh, people Some people get frustrated like that. They do. All right? I've been spoken to in a threatening manner before, but no, nothing quite that threatening. And he's a big bloke. He ain't constant enough to... Not by a prisoner that's probably in there for 10 years. Hold on, I'll be back. I'm gonna edit this out, don't even worry about it. I'll be right back. Right back. Ah. 
See, for y'all, that was probably like a split second. Nothing. He don't know what he's doing. He just lit. Like, he's he's a he's a bit of a feminine officer. Not being not like, racist or wherever you call that, but I think he's a bit he's a bit soft to work in a prison. These people are coming out of college and then they're coming in. But I think he's he's a he's a bit of a feminine officer. Not being not like, racist or wherever you. Call what are you talking about, guy? <laughs> That, but I think yeah. he's a bit, he's a bit soft to work in a prison. These people are coming out of college and then they're coming into here and they're locking up people that have done eight years in prison that have knocked screws out every week. His mentality, he shouldn't be an officer. Yeah. I don't think so, personally. Yeah. If you took Mr. Aldridge after doing six months here and stuck him in Wandsworth, oh my God. He'd quit, he'd quit the same day. I swear to God, he'd, he'd walk straight out and go, no, not for me. Yeah, this is a new officer. Of this is King. your perfect definition of He's quite toned, <laughs> he's fair, he's got a pretty mouth, and he's, he's good. This is what we want. He's got a pretty... I bet you he got Vaseline in his pocket. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> There are over 3,800 women behind bars in Britain, and they are far more likely than men to be jailed for a first offence. And keeping order presents its own unique challenges. A lot of people say I could never work with women, but they're not violent. It is a lot of mental Drama. games with them, but if you can deal with that side of it, then... Ellie Roberts. I'm pretty sure you can put it together when you all do. You ain't here, okay? Miss Ellie, Ellie. Ellie, Ellie Roberts, holla at me. Get on with it. 23 year old Ellie Roberts is one of six officers who controls 100 inmates on Sea Wing. Today, she is having a weekly catch up with prisoner Gemma. Right, how has your week been? Um, it's been really good actually. You got a job on the wing yeah. as a painter. And you've helped me so much. Yeah. And you haven't judged me. And you've, no matter what I've done, however naughty I've been, you've all, you've all supported me. I'm getting closer to my faith, mm -hmm. I'm reading my religious books and I'm not tempted to, I'm not getting cravings, I'm not tempted, because everything's positive right now and everyone's helping me mm -hmm. and I don't want to let everyone down and I don't want to let myself down. Ellie is impressed with Gemma's progress, but not everyone on the wing is so enamoured. You little nitty, you little fucking fiend. I'm ignoring her. She's doing this because she thinks I've had drugs and not shared it with her. Well, have you? No, I haven't. She wants me to beat her, innit? And I will beat her. No, you won't. Would you just go backwards again? Gemma. No, do it. Come, do it. Come, Tracy. Move, move, move. Move. Move the iron, then. Come. Come, because you think I'm going to can I have her? Come on, Tracy, please. Move the iron, then. Tell her she's running out of the office with an iron. Tracy. No, you've let her run out of the office when I attend. Oh, wow, well, don't grasp me. I'm not grasping. You're a f***er. You're a f***er. You're a f***er. You're a f***er. You're a Women are much more drama. Man. I'm wrong then. I'm wrong then. She's a grass. You put Lisa Pacey do down the sink. Why would you do that? Sit down. Because I'm going to move from an iron. Because like, they're trying to provoke me, innit? They're trying to provoke me. Yes, I know, and you're you're rising to it. Oh shit, you started off today. I love you, I'll find you back. <laughs> now you started off now, come on. Tracy! Gemma, you're a dick! What else? What else? Tracy! 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 Why is she doing this? Well, she was my friend, didn't it? She thinks I've had drugs without her and she's going on like this. I bet she don't even go on basic for that. You run out the office yeah, with an iron in your hand. Yeah, because she's threatening me, miss. She's threatening me, obviously. I don't You fight. don't have an iron to defend yourself, do you? You just no. sit down like I told you to. Yeah, I know. All right. So, whatever, innit? It's just good. That was, that was an altercation. <laughs> I'm trouble a lot. <laughs> she's a troublemaker, but she's funny. I think she's quite funny. I probably shouldn't think she's as funny as she is, but she is. Despite Gemma's violent antics, She's recently found spiritual guidance in one of the most unlikely places. I found a Quran on a bin one day, on a metal bin when I was walking past. For some reason, I felt like, one, it shouldn't be on that bin, and one, it dropped out of the sky for me to read. When I find things, sometimes I think, God's dropped it out of the sky for me to find. 
I've been in jail two. So she found God in the jail. That's what you're saying. That's an unlikely place. It's not very unlikely. A lot of prisoners find God in prison or find the education in prison. It's very likely. Two years, nearly two and a half years, and I've wasted my whole time here. I've fucked about with spice. I've just tried to kill my time. Now it's getting to the end of my sentence. I really regret it. With only months left of her sentence, Gemma needs to keep her nose clean. But in prison, keeping away from trouble is easier said than done. Britain's prisons are bursting at the seams as more of us than ever are residing at Her Majesty's pleasure. 62% of British jails are overcrowded. Bigger numbers means ever greater pressure on the men and women who are responsible for maintaining order inside. Half of the male staff look like Officer Paul Blart. Y'all know who Paul Blart is. Top-notch mall security. That's Paul Blart, all of them. At Bullingdon, 95 new officers have been recruited in the past year to help ease the strain. Got all the landing pages in one go. Happy days. New officer John Aldridge needs to be on his toes. He's already been seriously intimidated and is desperate to gain some credibility with the prisoners. Come on, come on, come on. It's not gonna happen day one, my guy. Come on, come on, come on. Mr. Aldridge, hack it, please. Mr. Aldridge, please hack it. Oi, Frank. Frank. The informal rules of prison mean officers rely on influential prisoners to help keep order. On Sea Wing, it's down to Anthony Gooch. He's on remand for six months for an armed robbery he says he didn't commit. On Sea Wing, he's trusted by officers. I'm an insider and a violent reduction rep. So where uh, a prisoner might find it a bit difficult to go and talk to an officer about certain problems he's got on the wing, whether he owes money for drugs or there's a bit of a beef from outside that's come into the prison, he can come to us um, so he doesn't think he's a bit of a grass for going to the officers and then we can try and intervene and try and sort it out or uh, sort a solution out without it becoming violent. Supervising officer Mark Walker is particularly concerned by one new prisoner. You're here as a violence reduction rep. Yeah. Got any issues with one of the lads that's recently come on. Yeah. Uh, he's quite vulnerable. He's just received a life sentence. He's stating to us that he's under threat on the unit. Yeah. But you've been on the spell all the time. I need to know whether um, he's going to be OK. Because if he is under threat, I need to move him off the unit. Yeah, this is the one that came in for the uh, murder. Yes. Yes, I'm yeah. aware. Yeah, yeah, I can sort that out, no problem. So he's like an informant, or what's going on here? I don't think in jail that's like. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what I consider that. Just three days into the job, Officer John Aldridge has been given the duty of checking on the high risk prisoner Walker's worried about. High risk officer checking on a high risk prisoner. They both gonna be makes a shocking discovery and immediately calls Gooch and fellow officers for assistance. The inmate is covered in blood in what appears to be an act of self-harm. A code red is called when blood has been spilled. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I saw him like three minutes ago. Yeah, I'll give you another towel. What's your name? What's up, mate? Now, sit down. Get him out. I'll get him out. 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 Get him While Aldridge clears the wing, Gooch steps in to take charge of the situation. What's going on? I'm sure it's going on. They're all me. Who? 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 That man's in there with PTSD. Something wrong up here. He's talking about they own. Listen, I promise you. Well, it feels like it's me. Mr. Aldridge is one that discovered him, Mr. Sheer. Mr. Aldridge, yeah. I come up and done his check. 
at half past yeah, two. And he's on two hour of the obs. He pressed his cell bell, so oh, I come right. up and he was banging on the door. I thought, I couldn't see what through the obs guys. I thought he smashed his head open. It was yeah. all pouring down. We've got a vulnerable inmate uh, that's been given a life sentence. Um, suffering from very severe paranoia, um, but the paranoia's got so much that he's decided to take a razor and cut his throat all the way around. Um, where the officers were at the door and they wanted to go in, he's then paranoid the officers are going to hurt him. Uh, so I went in on my own and he handed over the knife and we've managed to treat him and he's gone off. But um, someone like that needs to be down healthcare to get their, um, their head in the right place. I, I done. That yeah, man need to be moved to the psych ward. Yeah, no, 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 Does he need to go see the prison psychiatrist or something? I'm like, bro, what are you? You signed up for this. It had to be in a book somewhere that you read, or you just had to know that seeing this stuff was a possibility. What are you? Are you? Are you flustered? What are you? An estimated 150 million a year is spent on mental health services for inmates, but incidents of self harm and suicide are at a record high. <laughs> In Downview, Gemma James is back in trouble and waiting to see the duty governor. He's known me half my life and he likes to give me the pet turf right. He, that he cares about me and this, that, but he won't be that lenient with me. Gemma was caught trying to climb a prison fence. Now she faces an adjudication which could add time to her sentence. Gemma is out here trying to fight with an iron. She's trying to climb prison walls, like... Mm -hmm. And we adjourn this for you to seek legal advice, didn't we? Yeah. And did you seek that? No, because I sat my solicitor. So you sacked your solicitor. So he won't represent me. So, this next charge. Uh, Governor Chris James attempted to climb the fence between the AstroTurf and the chapel after making threats to climb on a roof. She had to be assisted down and escorted back to the wing. That concludes the evidence. Thank you. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So where did you think yeah. you was going to end up? Here, down the sea. No, no, no. When you're climbing the fence. Well, nowhere, was... really. I, I was just frustrated and angry and I wasn't thinking. And I, I was being impulsive. How does that not happen again? I can't guarantee that nothing will happen again. But I'm hoping that I've passed that stage now. And when I've realised that everyone still supports me no matter what I do, I don't, I don't want to let my... She's very manipulative. Myself down or anyone else. Tell them what they want to hear. That's how you get it done. In light of all you've said, Gemma, and obviously, you know, the evidence have presented to me and the things that have been mentioned before, um, it's inevitable that I find... Answer the phone. What is ...on this charge proven. OK. Can I have the conduct report, please? She can be very polite and follow the regime, and on the other hand, she can be rude and disobey the prison regime. Miss James is a manipulative person and was manipulating staff in the past to gain certain things like emergency vapes or be allowed to get her TV back. Recent days, I've seen Miss James under the influence of the substance on many occasions and also causing problems like jumping through the window. Looking at it. She is shocked by her own behaviour, like, I did that? A TV? I so did get that TV back by doing that thing your adjudication report and your conduct reports, there's been more downs and ups. So, you're sitting at the moment then with 14 days stoppage you've earned at 80% and 14 days loss of county. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Because you know we've known each other about 15 years, so I'm thankful. It's been a while, isn't it? Thank you. I've known Gemma an awful long time and it's very easy to get depressed ourselves when you see people coming back and not seemingly changing. But actually, she, she struggles sometimes to see the good in herself. And there's plenty there, and she's got lots to get. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm worried that I'll get into debt because I've got lots of cameras between the beats. You know, we're going to manage that over there. Gemma got lots of canteen on her adjudication, which means that she can't order any vapes, she can't order any phone credits, she can't order chocolate, she can't order anything like that. She'll probably start playing about and trying to get any way she can get anything. Thank you for all your help. It's all right. Just don't stop messing around. Thank you. 
In Bullingdon, rookie officer John Aldridge has also been called to a meeting with the governor. To John. Oh, they fire him. He gonna get himself hurt, his colleagues hurt, and some prisoners. Yeah, nice to see you. You're right. Yeah. Just want to, just want to, yeah, I just want to catch up with you about that if I can. A third of prison officers quit within a year of starting the job. Yeah, good thanks. He's gonna add to that so system. Governor Ian Blakeman is keen to check on John after he witnessed a case of self-harm two days ago. So obviously massively traumatic event you had the day before yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was stuff like that. So it's shaking you up a bit? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't sleep at all on Wednesday night. No, self-harm with that magnitude isn't that common, mm. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? So, um, you know, it's uh, pretty traumatic. I'm sorry you went through that early on, but... I guess... In hindsight, in another six months, it will probably be quite character building. You've got a lot of experience into your first week, so... <laughs> you know. My bad about that, man, but i got to sit back. If I don't sit back like this, then I, you won't see it, but it's only a little bit, man. Pretty traumatic for anyone to deal with, but particularly difficult, I think, for someone who's just come into the job. That could, that could be a defining moment for him. I just want to see how he was, but clearly shaken up, but seems to be doing OK. I'd advise you go and do some work before you'll get behaviour warnings. I think the job as a whole is, yes, what you expect it to be. Uh, some days it's not. Um, sometimes you don't expect to open the door and find blood gushing out of someone's neck. Officers are quitting the service every month and staff are increasingly forced to deal with extreme situations. Just one week on from her adjudication, Gemma resorted to violence after losing her vapes. She smashed her cell window in frustration and staff were forced to take action. From what I can gather, she's been asking for vapes because um, they didn't turn up in her canteen. She's quite rude staff. She started to rip up the mattress, so we had to take that out. And she just screamed at Yeah, man, I mean, you know, those are addicting. Those have a lot of addicting qualities. So if you take something cold turkey from somebody that they're addicted to, of course they're going to go crazy because they are addicted to it. That wasn't the greatest move. I wanted to get out, and as we left, she started to take her clothes off and to tie like a ligature up at the bars. So I've been sat around for two weeks doing nothing. Obviously, I, I started getting high again, and, and it's not good for me. We can't give up on her, really, because if we give up, then she's going to give up. She just needs to see that people actually care, and having that person there to consistently keep on top of her, I think, is what she needs, and she'll eventually take it on herself. Every day, on average, 230 prisoners are in transit around the prison estate. Good luck to you, mate. Doc, yeah? Good 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 They're either released, transferred between jails, I it. and some... For those of you that are new, I have two monitors. There's one right here, and there's one right here. This one, the one right here, it doesn't have me in it, so I'll be looking at this one too are relocated within the same prison. This churn can drastically affect the delicate stability of a wing. So that Smith, then, in 2.30, OK? Well, we're coming in the office for, for that. That's the last time I tell you. 3.02. 3.02, yeah. He's fussy, isn't he? He is a bit. So you just fucking got here. That's the safe place. What are you coming in the office for? On Sea Wing, one influential prisoner is on the move. Morning. Anthony Gooch has spent over five months on remand for armed robbery. Now, all the charges against him have been dropped, and he's a free man. Millsy, keep the chin up, brother. I'll send you an email, all right? Go on, mate. Do they get some type of compensation when that happens? Like, 
I told y'all it wasn't me, but I was still locked up. Like, what what happens? Or did he couldn't he not make bail, and that's why he was in there? Or like, I know here in America is guilty until proven. I mean, innocent until proven guilty. And sometimes you just can't make bail, and you sit there in the system like that. But Gooch was an insider, a violent seduction rep. For me, Gooch leaving that particular spur is going to cause a few issues because they had it nice and settled. We don't advocate self-policing, but it remained quiet. In a selfish way, I'm uh, a bit peed off because I've now got to start again and find out who's going to be top dog, as they say. Somebody. I ain't gonna lie, she is decent. I would have did the same thing, Mr. Gooch. But you like male officers with pretty mouths, so I don't know. <laughs> Somebody else is obviously going to be trying to take over their spot. So there will be a power struggle for the next week or so. No, I was there. She used to try to sit here with plugs. Dot back, dot back. Boom, one on his ass. Second one to hit me with a plug. As Gooch leaves Bullingdon, a veteran of the prison system is settling into Sea Wing. Aaron De Santos is inside for robbery and violence. He's been relocated from another part of the jail. What are you doing over here, De Santos? I was just speaking to my friend that I haven't seen in a long time. OK, can you relocate back on Spur 3, please? Thank you very much. All right, as well. Just watch the Santos and um, Tattoo guy. Yeah, yeah. And just watch him. The Spur has felt a little bit uneasy since he's arrived on the Spur. So it's, it was quite calm relatively before, but it's now a little bit up and down. Give me, I'm, try, I'm trying to make sure my mum's got a bit of money there. My mum broke. That grew up broke, broke, fuck all. So I started stealing shit. I started, like, as a youth, I thought, what? If I like it, why don't I just take it? Then it just started from that. Started running up in bandos, this, that, the other. This is life, innit? I don't want to live this life. I do it because I have to. Dos Santos has been moved onto the wing after... Product of his environment. Black Air Force One energy. You see it? You see the vibes? ...causing trouble elsewhere in the prison. Staff want to keep a close eye on him in the hope that they can prevent further disruption. Miss Robbins, I believe you're going to IR the conversation that you overheard regarding yeah. the Santos. Are you sure you're not about to dump oh. someone Yeah, um, is it the, the trees basic person? come back from free flow. Okay. Ellie and what's And said to Dos Santos that it is the basic he's heard that beef's going to go down. I don't know who it was in. between. That was all I heard, really, so maybe just keep an eye okay. on him. Yeah. If he goes off the unit, uh, there are other prisoners within the establishment that um, intend to harm him. Now, that's you missed a fucking spot. Now, that's so childish for cubs, really. I won't care. <laughs> it's not a proper prison. It's like a training camp for officers. Like, it's not run like a proper job. I've been coming in since I was 18. I've been doing this shit for years. I've done, like, 23 jails, so this, is, this ain't nothing. Like, so... Did you have a lot of mates on you? Yeah. Got mates all over the jail. Got a lot of people that want to kill me as well. But life, innit? Life, isn't it? No, that is not life. No, it's not. <laughs> Gemma James has now been in the segregation unit at Downview for a week after smashing her cell window. She's not allowed visitors or interaction with other prisoners, though she is allowed post. This is my favourite one because I never had one from funkypigeon.com. <laughs> <laughs> Read it out. <laughs> so it says, to Gemma, happy birthday, thinking of you on your special day. You're a pain in the ass, but I will, I'll always love you, sis. Hope you are well and staying positive. Hope you have a lovely day. Love always, Amy, and loads of kisses. Another year older, and having had time to reflect, Gemma's come to a realisation. I cannot be... Wait, before we get there, Gemma. This is going to be interesting because at this point, I don't believe any of Gemma's realizations. I don't think she's really realizing anything. I just think she'd be preaching to the choir now. No. This is um, if it's double trouble, isn't it? Come to a realization. I cannot beat the system if it's double trouble, isn't it? Yes, 
The ball's in your court, really. I know the okay. last 24 hours, we've been behaving well. Yes. Before that, not so good. No. Yeah, and like you say, you're not going to get what you want, and no. you haven't been in defeat. Do you remember the story about the two wolves? No. Native American story. Brave went to the chief and he said, there's a battle raging within me. It's tearing me apart. There's one wolf saying, tear, kill, get revenge, hate. And the other wolf is saying, no, be kind, look after the planet, look after each other. I cannot live with this battle within me. Which wolf is going to win? And the chief says, it's the wolf you feed. Be the Gemini. Yeah, I'm part Native American. I've never heard that one. I've heard of the devil and the angel on your shoulder. It sounds the same. Same type of analogy, right? We've seen before. Because we've seen the good and the bad in you. Yeah. yeah. I'm very grateful. Thank you for having me. Like many persistent offenders. What? <laughs> I'm very grateful Thank for having me. Woo. Thank you for having me. She off that stuff right there. Having you in prison? Like many persistent offenders in Britain's jails. Gemma's many problems appear to stem from drug abuse. Introduced me to drugs when I was 14. It's ruined my whole life. But I'm scared that when I get out, where am I going to go? Like, am I going to end up just going back to what I know? Muslim convert Gemma is planning to observe Ramadan. With her release date looming, she hopes it will inspire her to keep out of trouble. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. As-salatu karim minam As-salatu karim minam I have to do it for Allah, because everyone loves food, so we fast with our food. Uh, no sex, no, even this look, it tells you on it for fasting, what you're not allowed to do. And it actually says on here, it says, no eating, drinking, swallowing, masturbation with ejaculation, smoking, swallowing water when gargling, vomit, taking medication or blood or, or drugs. So I can put water in my mouth and spit it out because I know my lips are going to be very dry. I think I've become a better person when I'm being a Muslim and I'm trying and I'm being sincere in my heart. I didn't know you couldn't swallow water when they do that. I feel something different and I feel very uplifted. Hungry. Does it run down soon as well? Yeah. You're going to stop vaping? I have to. I've got no choice, but I'm going to struggle. I have to because I want to do it from my heart and I want to be forgiven for everything that I've done. Yeah. Gemma has got a lot more positive attitude behind her at the moment. I don't know what's happened. I think she's surrounded by a few better people, maybe. And that's encouraging her to behave herself and stay off the spies. She's getting out of debt and hopefully this will last a bit longer than last time. When did this come out? 2020, okay. So she's 24? Just trying to do a little bit of research, trying to figure out where I I'm feel like I'm having a constant battle with myself in my head every day, every, all the time, because oh. I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to do the things that I do. I'm tired, I'm bored, I'm sick of it. And the only way I can find peace with that is the fact that I'll tell myself that I wasn't born Muslim, I wasn't born out of love. If I was born out of love and marriage and, and religion, maybe things might have been different. She'll always be Gemma. That's something we can't change, but we've just got to change her mindset rather than her as a person because she's who she is. And she can't change what she's done in the past, but she can change the way things pan out for her in the future. I think Gemma has an ability to make something of her life. She, she's just a person that needs to find herself first. I agree. Gemma's very charismatic. But she needs to focus that energy onto something positive, which she's trying to do. So. In an ideal world, I wish that in five years, I would be five years drug free. And I would definitely hope that I wouldn't be in here, in prison. I would rather kill myself, that's telling the truth. In Bullingdon... It's getting dark and I don't have screens. Joaquin, after influential prisoner have, Anthony Gooch left... I don't have lights, so I gotta, I'm not gonna pause anymore. 
because once the light goes out from outside, I can't record. The wing. Guys, pack it in! The mood on the wing has changed dramatically, especially since the arrival of new inmate, Aaron De Santos. Where you get, you're locked up all day, so when you get out, you go with this energy, so you gotta do something with it. What are you doing out here anyway? Guys. Seawing, Mark Walker. Yes, not good, but go on. As prisoners jockey for position, disorder is spreading across the wing. Do you love one thing, and it's like everyone knows, and then all of a sudden everyone joins in, and they just jump on the bandwagon. Dang, so the Gooch guy had the prison on lock. He had a good... <laughs> This was recovered um, uh, by the phone boxes. It's solid metal. It's come, it's come from uh, one of the prisoners' chairs. So yes, if you get that right around your head, or even around your body, you'll do some serious damage. The violence is escalating, and there's now a serious threat of anarchy on scene. In Bullingdon Prison, officers are now battling to keep. I'm taking it to the segment. In Bullingdon. I'm not gonna lie, man. They got some decent female girls. Prison, officers are now battling to keep control of Sea Wing. Before anybody leaves this unit prisoner wise, they will be completely rubbed down, searched, and they will be wanded. The information we've received is something is going to happen. OK, keep an eye on me. I've got all the rights me, fucking me. You've been given instructions, you repeat, goodbye. One time, here we go. In just over a week, there have been multiple assaults, one so serious the police have been called in. Well, let's go, it's our chance. That's what we said, we'll do it later. Governor Ian Blakeman calls a meeting of staff to review CCTV footage of a here. particularly serious in-cell assault. Obviously, pick her aware we've had a number of assaults over the last couple of weeks in cell. He needs to identify culprits and interrogate how they did it. The bit we really want to take from this is just how sophisticated the distraction attempts are. So one of the ones involved in the first assault of Lynx is having a good old chat with Officer Robbins. And Shelley acted weird because he then puts his hand over his mouth and she's had to really concentrate on what he's saying. Eventually, as they come down to the cell, you'll see he speeds up and actually stands in her view in front of that cell. So he's distracting her. And then you'll see the cellmate go in and warn the others, and then they quickly disperse. There's something really serious behind this, and we need to stamp it out. The crackdown begins. Officers have been told to target the suspected ringleaders. We received information that um, five prisoners were involved. Are we going to be sent to me? Hands up to your chest for me, please. There we go. Right, now this will stand up and this will be sent to me. So they've been relocated from their cells down to the SSCU pending an investigation. Sea Wing is currently locked down. In all, 13 prisoners end up in the segregation unit. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Among them is Aaron De Santos, who's been linked to one of the most serious assaults. Obviously, I'm worried. I've got nine months left. If this, if somehow was by some bullshit they managed to let say I'm involved. I'm fucked. And what about the other guys? Do you know the other guys that are involved? Yeah, I know everyone involved. I live with the people that are involved with that. Or well, allegedly involved. Good cover up. Gotta hit him with the allegedly. It's quite busy and noisy down here, isn't it? Duty Governor Tarina Greenslade has come to the segregation unit to update all the prisoners on the investigation. Uh, uh, just doing Governor's rounds, how are you? 
Why are you down here? That's not well, have a, have a try. Why do you think you're down here? It's not fair, because I haven't done fuck all wrong. And I'm not saying but you I'm have. I'm willing to tell you my story, what happened. But it's subject to a police investigation, so it wouldn't be appropriate for you to tell me about it. You need to tell them about it when they come back and speak to those that are suspected right. of being involved. Oh, so I have to stay down here till Monday? Yes. All right. All right. Oh, the basement! Oh, just leave him. Can we carry on doing the rounds? Mrs. Santos, how are you? I could be better. I'm not going to make it any better for you. Stand down. Or, yes, until Monday at the earliest, all right? Monday at the earliest. Yeah. You're getting shipped out. Potentially, yes. Look, I understand that. I'm happy for that. I'm not happy with it. But who I'm for, you know me, I'm used to this. You're going to come off the road, right? Can we get a shield and observe that, make sure he's OK, but you must have a shield there because the ops panel's come through, please. Thank you, Nigel. I'll get the gate. I thought he'd put the ops panel on. Crazy. Priority now for staff is to relocate those believed to be responsible for the attack. Those that were involved, they're trying to arrange transfers to other establishments around the country. Mr. De Santos um, left the units. He has been security moved away from Bullingdon to. We knew that was coming. Mr. Santos been had to go since he came. That boy's a renegade. He don't care. Another establishment um, out of area. With his history of assaults and violence, a lot of establishments will not take him. But he will not be returning to, to this prison. As does Santos. Yeah, I might as well just put him on the GPS. Let him go. Sleeves. Officers regain control of Sea Wing. Oh. I've been seeing about four or five female guards that that probably make it hard for these male prisoners. That's tough. Shut up! But it's not the only change on the wing. Yeah. Don't call me a dickhead again. I've got a good relationship with quite a lot of prisoners on this wing, and it'll be very sad when I leave them in some ways because you know. Wait, what? You leaving? What happened to the sound? Dang. The sound gone. Well, we can I can pretty much infer what's going on with him. He's out of there. He is done. Done for. Dunzo. Quit. He gonna go work at the nearest Aldi. No cap. If I can't hear it, there's no more point to it. Man, we'll be back on the next episode, next week episode. We already know you quit, bro. I don't need to hear the reasons why you're soft. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone. Oh, I'm still here. Let me 